Oh, hello, beard. It's your boy, Big Beard B, and we back for another edition of Big Beard Business. Look, man, when it comes down to fragrances, I know there are a ton of different mindsets of what you should buy and why you should buy them. So today, I'm going to give you five fragrances to make your fragrance collection 10 times cooler. When it comes to fragrance collections and what actually makes a fragrance collection cool, everyone is going to have their own mindset on what truly does this. But I'm going to give you five things that I look at when it comes to something that makes a fragrance collection cool. Your thoughts may be different, but here we go. I think one of the things that I think about when I look at fragrances and what actually makes them cool, although they may not be the best, one of the things that comes down to is the actual bottle. So I do like cool bottles, and one of the bottles that I really like, uh, one of the houses that I like that really do cool bottles, even though the bottles themselves are really simplistic, the cap is really what makes a difference for me, is Penn Holligans, all right? And this one for me is Much Ado the Duke from Penn Holligans, okay? So this bottle, again, is pretty simplistic, but the... The actual cap here is what really sets this one apart for me. When I look at this one here, it's like a, this dog, and I think of Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Take a bite out of crime. Listen, <laughs> that's what I think about when I think when I see this bottle here, man. This one is like this floral fragrance, and this one is a part of their portrait series, and this one's really good for like spring and summer as well. But I think that the cap on this one really sets it apart. Now they have other ones out there that really are different. They have some like with uh, deer on the heads. They have a ton of different fragrances out there, but I do like this one here simply because it reminds me of Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. <laughs> I don't remember that the zip code, but that's what's coming to my mind when I think about the fragrance. So as I stated, man, the bottle itself, not really exciting. All right, but just that cap there really sets it apart and it makes you want to hear the story behind it because obviously with a cap like this, there must be a story. Now, I haven't really talked about Penn Holligans on the channel that much, so that's what your distribution looks like. Yeah, this one's nice. Nice balance of floral freshness here, not too florally where it leans over to the feminine side. I still think this one is a nice masculine juice or unisex. Let's say unisex. There we go. Pin Holligans, much ado about the Duke. Now, another talking point for me when it comes down to what makes a fragrance collection cool is something that has a nice presentation. And in this case, I want to head over to Killian's presentations. Now, I know on this channel I talk about Fuck the Box for quite some time, and I often get this question when I'm showing their fragrances. So let me explain. So their fragrances come in this box here, all right? fancy box here that you pay an extra $100 for. So people always say, Big Big B, why aren't you breaking this box? Well, because I pay extra money for this presentation. All right, outside of that, you have the little travel atomizers there, and that one's different, all right? Break that box all you want, but if you're paying the extra money for it, then you might as well utilize the box. Now, one of the cool things about their presentations to me is it comes with this lock and key, all right? So there you go, man, you put the key in, if I can get it in the hole. You put your key in, all right, you turn it, and you lock your fragrance in the box, all right? This one is even cooler because it has skulls on it, and that makes it a whole nother level in my personal opinion. I like the skulls piece with it, and it kind of reminds me of something out of some medieval time frame type of centuries. It's a really cool setup, all right? So I think that in itself would make your fragrance collection look cool. Take the key out of the picture in itself i think just having that skull is really going to be a nice conversation starter and i think that's one of the things that really tied me to the line when i first came across it i'm like oh i really like the skull then i began to smell the fragrances and i really like those as well and now i have well a lot <laughs> so there are a ton of other companies out there that do presentations really well i just really like this one and because of that, I paid the extra money for it, and I don't break this box that I paid for. But the white box, oh yeah, fuck that box. Now, if you're like me, you got into fragrances, um, one, because someone introduced you to it, but outside of that, it's the compliment factor that kind of goes along with it. So I think another thing that makes a fragrance collection really cool is a compliment monster fragrance. Now, I think a fragrance that a lot of people know um, that, that does well, and here's a, here's a point for you, right? Like, how do I know if a fragrance is doing well? All right, well, generally speaking, if a fragrance does well, they have flankers, all right? They have spinoffs, i.e., 
Bleu de Chanel, right? So you have the Bleu de Chanel EDT, which sold extremely well. You had the EDP, which sold extremely well. And then you also have the Parfum version here, which is now selling extremely well. Chanel does a lot of great things when it comes down to fragrances, as they've done with their women's line. They've done this with the men's collection as well. And I think that many of you already know about this fragrance. So this one here is a good conversation starter. I think that if someone is looking at a fragrance collection and they're familiar with anything, this, they're gonna automatically gravitate to this one here. Like, oh, yeah, I know what that fragrance is. And then you kind of open up for other conversation pieces from that. Now, Bleu de Chanel is a fragrance that I think generates a lot of compliments and a lot of, of conversation. This one makes a lot of lists and it's extremely versatile, whether you're wearing this to the office, wearing this one out and about, or if you're wearing this one on a date, um, you could get away with that on all three, whether you're wearing the EDT, EDP, or the Parfum version. So just something I think you should have in your collection is a compliment monster. I'm not saying this one is the most complimented fragrance of all time, but generally, speaking you can see this one on a lot of compliment lists because it works the next thing i think makes a fragrance collection really cool is a trendy fragrance all right sometimes these fragrances can be limited editions and you may overpay for them like i did so one of the ones that i think was a good conversation piece for me nonetheless for people that do come over is this one here which is supreme edition le mal all right so for those of you who've been around this channel for a while you know that i've had this one in collection and i paid way too much for it let me explain when this one launched it launched just like any other fragrance that comes out from the mall around that 90 dollars price point immediately sold out with this limited edition setup and you weren't able to smell it okay so you had no idea of, of what this thing smelled like all right and um long story short i spent about 300 dollars for this a few hours after it came out for 90 dollars and it's just the regular <laughs> Lamar in the Navy with a little Supreme logo slapped on it. So who knows, man, they might've been like, had way too many bottles in production, say, hey, how can we recycle this fragrance and get some more money and buzz generated around it? Let's go ahead and put this little Supreme logo on it and, you know, let it sell out. And, and that's exactly what it did, all right? So this one here, Supreme Lamar in the Navy is just the regular Lamar in the Navy with the Supreme logo snatched on it or attached on it and I paid way too much for it. But I think just from a conversation piece, this one, so people are so familiar with the Supreme logo and if they come into this, they can we can talk about it. This is a limited edition fragrance. Um, I really only sprayed it maybe, I don't know, two or three times. So there you have it. I might be able to get some of my money back as time goes on and this one becomes less and less available as people have depleted the juice just so they could say they have that one on. All right, so there you have it. A trendy fragrance will definitely help make your fragrance collection 10 times cooler. And then the final thing I think you need to have in your collection to have it really cool and make it 10 times cooler is a limited edition fragrance with a great story. And here's why, if the fragrance is limited, it means that generally speaking, it's not going to be in a lot of people's fragrance collection. Now, for people who aren't into fragrance, for you to say you have a limited fragrance, <laughs> you're already 10, five times cooler, all right? And then when you add it that um, it has a great story behind it, it just kicks it up a different notch or a different level. Now, one of the ones I wanna to talk to you about today comes from Argos International. Um, this one is Basio Immortale, all right? So I've talked about this one in maybe a weekly fragrance rotation video, but this one kind of checks the box on a lot of things. You have a cool presentation, you have a nice smelling fragrance, so this one's gonna garner you some compliments, and it has a cool story behind it, if I can get it out of the box here, all right? So there you go, man. Cool bottle, nice heavy bottle. You have the, the Greek mythology on the front, and this is kind of what this fragrance house is known for. Four. So there is a whole story about this fragrance with inside the box here. So Basio Immortale, which means the uh, eternal kiss or the immortal kiss, as it says here. This one, the cliff note version about this fragrance is this one is about some lovers who went to the depths of hell and back to fight for their love. All right. And I think if you look into this, man, you can have that good conversation. And I think uh, just stories like that really make the conversation a bit better when you talk about fragrances. And for people who are really into fragrances, you can like to geek out obviously this is not like a 
you know, something that we can confirm actually happened. But for those of you who are into Greek mythology, then you can probably say, hey, this is all right. All right, so some of your notes in a fragrance like this, you have bergamot, you have lemon, you have some peppers, you have raspberry, you have violet, you have jasmine, you have leather, you have musk, you have oud, you have birch, and vanilla, along with a bunch of other things there, man. So this one kind of checks all of those boxes. In your personal opinion, what makes a fragrance collection cool? I would love to know. I think those are five things that you should look for in terms of building in your collection to make it really cool. If you like to have conversations about it, or if you have something on display in your man cave, or just when people come over, you like to talk about fragrances and kind of bug out about them, there you go. All right, so those are, in my opinion, five things to make your fragrance collection 10 times cooler as always i will have everything linked down below if you want to check any of these fragrances out and you know who i am as always i'm your boy big beer be and read the like comment and subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend that we are back again yes man you with the cool fragrance collection hit the goddamn damn